that never left Israel, that was holy, that had a vision that we can never, ever fathom. He's not going to be so easily duped and deceived. No. He loved his son Esau. Kitsai Befiv doesn't mean that he was the one entrapped by his son's fraudulent behavior. Rather, he frauded, he trapped his son. He said to, he basically, this was psychology that we all have to learn from. He said, huh, this is a son I shouldn't love. I'm going to love him. He's not expecting love. I'm going to show him affection. I'm going to hug him. I'm going to kiss him. I'm going to say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Kitsayid Befiv. Now listen to this. Sayed, the letters Sayed, it's Sadiq Yud Dalid, has the same letters, Sadiq Dalid Yud, which is an abbreviation for Tzadik. Kit Sadiq Befiv. What did he do? All he did was call his child, Asaf, who didn't deserve it, Tzadik. And he used his mouth to give Asaf compliments, to build his esteem, to make him feel good, and to say, I love you. Tzadi Befiv, Sayed. He made him feel loved, he made him feel good. Why? He said, listen, I believe in his innate potential. I believe in his eternity. I will never give up on him. And perhaps, perhaps, he knew what he was doing. Not God forbid, perhaps. He knew what he was doing, of course. He knew what he was doing. But let me prove to you he knew what he was doing. The Arizal says the Arizal that Asaph, as bad as he was, he had a lot of goodness in him. And it was because of his father's love that eventually, generations later, what came out of Esav? The holiest people. Converts to Judaism. Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Meir, Shmaya, Avtalion, Unklus, and on and on and on. Yes, the immediate results weren't apparent. Esav looked like he was bad and wicked and evil. But Yitzchak saw the lo- Yitzchak saw the holiness. Yitzchak saw the potential and never gave up. And that's why Esav produced the greatest leaders of the Jewish people, the holiest leaders of the Jewish people. But there's one more point I want to share. How did Yitzchak get this? After all, we said that Yitzchak was gavura, strict, stern, austere, disciplined, very, very unaccommodating, very inflexible. How did he get this? How was he able to love so much? How was he able to accomplish this? I'll tell you how. Because the very first time the Torah ever uses the word love, is Avraham's love to Yitzchak, a father's love to a son. The very first time God ever employs the word, utilizes the word, the lexicon of love, is Avraham to Yitzchak. As much as Yitzchak was austere and strict and stern, and people had such reverence for him, he had his father's love. And when you have your father's love, remember, if you don't learn how to love, you don't learn how to live. Love is the constitution. Love is the mainstay. Ha'ava iker. Love is the main. Love is everything. He had his father's love. He was able to project. He was able to reciprocate that love to the next generation. And to give love to Esau. When Esau needed it most. Esau was born with a predisposition, with a proclivity. It wasn't his fault. He was given a handicap, so to speak, a real test from God. He was born red, red representing impulse. And he had to contain that, he had to control that. And Yitzchak saw beneath, Yitzchak saw deeper. Yitzchak saw all those future generations of holiness. Yitzchak said, Sadiq. He called him the Sadiq. Yitzchak tricked him. Yitzchak said, You think I'm going to give up to you? I'm not going to give up to you. I'm going to love you because I got love from my father. I'm giving a special appeal to men. Your children, sons and daughters, they need your love. Everybody knows maternal love, maternal instinct. But what about men? Men, children need your love. There are studies now that show that men produce oxytocin. That's the hormone. That's the chemical that mothers give when they nurse babies. It's just like this almost mysterious bond that's created. Men also do. When a man gives love to his kids, those kids he cultivates, he develops those kids into becoming lovers as well. Healthy, wholesome, well-adjusted adults. They track children that were loved. 40 years later, these, the Harvard study uses the word flourishing. These adults were flourishing. 
Whereas the adults that didn't get the love as children, they weren't flourishing. They had broken relationships, they had depression, they were on psychotropics. Love. That's what God wants. That's what the parsha is all about. It's about loving. Who are you going to love? It starts at home. Love your children. Say, I love you. Don't tell your kids you, that they mean everything to you. Yeah, give them the money. They need the money. Okay, give them shelter. They need the shelter. But more importantly, don't, don't judge. Don't be critical. Trick them. Even when they don't deserve the love, you give them the love. I want to thank you all for listening. And I want to get feedback. Please, let me know what you thought about tonight's lecture. Let me know if I could help you. But give me some feedback. Email the office, info at bjxcenter.com. Please, info at bjxcenter.com. And please, one more time, chickensforshabbos.com. Please have it in mind. Show the love. You want to express love and share love? Go to chickensforshabbos.com so that somebody will have a chicken for Shabbos. Somebody will have food to put on the table. Thank you all so much. and wish you a wonderful Shabbos.